Hello, this is Ray Enke from James Madison University, and this is the DNA Subway Purple Line short video tutorial number two. So last time in the last short video, I showed you how to set up a Purple Line project, how to complete this managed data step, which is to pull in FASTQ files and a metadata file associated with those samples, uh, and then set up this demultiplex step, which is actually uh, Demultiplexing, which in this case has already been done, but it's also doing another important step, which is checking the quality of our data files. So uh, when we left off, that job was running. It took about 10 to 15 minutes to run. That will vary depending on how many data files and how big your data files are. So that step can take anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, sometimes a couple of hours if you have a really large data set. So you do have to be patient with these steps. If you're doing this as an in-class analysis with your students, you do have to factor in that some of these steps may have long uh, analysis times. So it's always a good idea to sort of check to see how long these steps are going to take uh, before you go into class. Uh, what we can see now is there was previously a red R indicating that this job was running, and now there's a green V indicating that we can view these samples that they're done. So we're going to click back into this demultiplex step. And what we can see, instead of the setup, we now have, uh, we can sort of see our output. And what we're looking at is this demultiplexing summary, which we're going to click into. And you can see that we're now looking at a Chime 2 uh, set of data. Um, so these, uh, these data, you have two tabs of data. You have the overview data, and then you have your interactive quality plots. Let's first really quickly look at the overview. We have a summary, a table summary, that's telling us about how many reads are in our data set. We have uh, the minimum is telling us uh, the sample with the least amount of reads is up here, about 2,000. The sample with the most amount of reads is here, it's 51,000-ish. And then we have mean and median info on reads per sample, and then we have our total number of reads. So we have about 300,000, a little over 300,000 reads in this total experiment. And again, this is our um, five male, five female snakes in duplicate, so 20 samples. Here's a little table view of that frequency data. And down here is a per sample sequence count. So we have our 20 samples, um, uh, five male, five female musk gland samples that we swabbed, and then we're getting our sequence count in descending order. So here's our top sample with a little bit uh, over 51,000 reads, male four musk number two. Scrolling all the way down to our least amount, uh, female five musk one. Still has about 2,000 samples. That should be plenty for our analysis. That's the overview tab. Let's now click over to this interactive quality plot tab. And this gives us just that, these interactive quality plots. Uh, and specifically what these kind of plots are, are called per base quality plots, where we have on the y-axis, we have the FRED score plotted. And on the x-axis, we have each individual base position of our 250 base pair reads. Keeping in mind, we have forward reads and reverse reads because this is a paired end experiment. Uh, and then we have these box plots that are showing us the average FRED score at each position of our, of our sequencing data. If you're not familiar with what a FRED, FRED score is, that's a quality score. It's a probability score uh, that the sequencer has called the correct base. And so what we're looking for is that a FRED score of 30 or above indicates high quality data. Uh, below that is sort of less than ideal data. And so what we could do is sort of take a panned out view looking at our forward reads. We can see that most of our data is uh, of good quality. And then towards the end of the read, uh, we're seeing that the quality dips down. That's not uncommon. Sometimes you'll see lower quality reads at the very beginning and the very end of your sequencing read, and you sort of see a similar trend for our reverse read data. What we need to do for our next step, uh, our next step in the pipeline is going to be trimming and filtering the data. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to tell the software exactly where to trim. Our left side for forward and reverse looks good, so we're going to keep that. We need to pinpoint the base position that we want to trim uh, uh, at, at the right side of the read. And what we can do is we can use the click and drag option to zoom in. So I'm going to click and drag using my cursor, and that's going to zoom us way in to the right side of these reads, to the tail end of the reads. And we can do the same thing over here for the reverse reads. And now we're able to see these box plots a little bit better. Uh, we're also able to hover over each one of the box plots to indicate 
a kind of a summary of which base position that is um, and you know some notes about the quality and we also have this helpful color code indicator uh, where the bars go from blue to red typically indicates where you're having some problems we can also see visually i'm hovering here over uh, in the forward reads over base position 243 we could see this one is clearly like sort of where the quality starts to, to go down uh, so with this step you do need to take a close look at your reads i'm going to jot down this number 243 for my forward reads because we'll need to feed that number in in the next step let's go over here to the reverse reads and do the same thing we can see we're going from blue to red it looks like at position 245 but it also looks that position 242 is where the the data starts to really tail off so i'm going to write down 242 for my reverse reads and then you have some sort of table data down here if you're interested i usually just kind of look at these really have students look at these plots uh, but you do have more table data down here once we extract that vital information uh, the quality information uh, i'm going to x out of here and we're going to go to this next step in the metadata and qc uh, stop this data to substop and there's a couple of important things happening here at the data to stop there's actually a few things the two most important things that we'll focus on today is one we're going to trim and filter our data so we can get rid of any low quality reads uh, the data to software will also assign taxonomy to each individual read so that's another very important step for all these future steps but it is key you definitely want to filter out any low quality data because that will skew your analysis. If you leave low quality data in there, what you're essentially saying is, I think this is the sequence, go ahead and analyze it. It's better, you're gonna get more reliable results if you filter out any low quality data. So let's click into the data two step. And what we could see here is that um, we have some, some, data that, some data that we have to input to tell the software where to trim. And we have two options, forward trim left, and uh, I'm sorry, we have two options, trim left and trunk length. So the trim left means how many bases do we wanna trim off the left side of those reads? And you remember that the data looked good on the left side, so let's keep that at zero for both left, uh, forward and reverse. And then uh, the trunk len, that indicates how long you want the reads to be. Another way to think of it is how much do you wanna trim off the right side of those reads? And we decided that uh, at position 243 for the forward reads is where things started to get dicey. So we're going to say we want these to be 242 bases. And what that's going to do is that's going to eliminate everything to the right of that. And for the reverse reads, we decided that we wanted 242. Uh, well, actually, 242 is where things got bad. So 241 um, is where we're going to where we're gonna select. So these parameters are saying, please don't trim anything off the left side of the forward and reverse reads because that quality looked great. Uh, but we want you to please trim, limit the length to 242 and 241 respectively. Now definitely keep in mind that this will be variable depending on your data set. So these parameters are very specific to this demo data set that I'm giving you. If you're analyzing your own data or a different data set, this will de really depend on what your sequence quality looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this trim reads. And this is another step that uh, may take a little while. It could take up to 30 minutes, sometimes up to several hours. This again depends on the complexity and the size of your data set. Keeping in mind that Data2 is first doing your trimming and filtering. It's then doing a few other QC steps like removing any chimeric reads or replicate reads. It's then taking each individual read and sort of doing something akin to a blast search, but using sort of a different algorithm. And it's assigning a micro, a bacterial taxonomy to each read. And remember, we had 300,000 plus reads in our data set. So this will take a little while to run. And this is typically a step, if I'm doing this in class with students, I'll have students work on this pipeline up to this point and usually there's a long enough duration that we wait until the next class, or maybe I have a homework assignment that they check it the next day. So definitely keep in mind, this is one of those steps that is gonna take a little while. Uh, when we exit out here, you'll see that we have this red R indicating that data two is running. Once it's completed running, we'll see the green V indicating that we can pop this open, 
have a look at the results, which we'll talk about in the next video. And then we'll be able to open the alpha rarefication step and begin our, our next set of analyses. So uh, if you're ready to do those steps, please check out video number three.